Hello guys and welcome, my name is Sorin and today I will talk about charging lithium-ion cells. Again, wait, there is a big difference today because I want to charge these cells to 3.9 volts. Is this value really important? Let's see. Before we begin, I have an important announcement. I think somebody is watching me. Immediately after I tested this BMS board, it became unavailable. And the only seller who had it, suddenly closed his business. I hope you're okay, man. Leave a comment if you're still alive. I will still test this BMS board. I hope I will not disappear also. Most lithium-ion cells can be charged to maximum 4.2 volts, right? But if you don't use them for a long period of time, it's not a good idea to store them fully charged. Because in time, it will slowly damage the cells and the capacity will decrease. That's why lithium-ion cells have a recommended storage voltage of around 3.8 volts. Also, if you fully charge or fully discharge them, it will decrease the number of usable cycles. So, for a long lifespan of the battery, it's recommended to use it between 20 and 80%. So, 3.9 volts per cell is starting to look pretty good now, right? You still get a lot of capacity and you can also store the cells for a long time, for example in a UPS, and use them for many cycles without damaging the cells. But how can we stop the charging at 3.9 volts? Well, there are a few options. One of them is this BMS protection board. It's actually made for lithium iron phosphate cells, but those cells have maximum 3.6 volts. If you charge them to 3.9 volts, you will damage them. So this board is also very weird. Lithium iron phosphate cells have a similar constant core and constant voltage charging method. So will it work with lithium ion cells? Let's see. This is the 3S battery pack from my previous video. I will add another cell and make it a 4S pack. I will connect the fourth cell to the rest of the battery pack using my spot welder and some thin nickel strips. Then I can solder the balance leads and add some 5 pin connectors. Let's mark the number 4 cell with my robotic writing. And the total voltage of the battery pack is... Ah, this is one of those BMS boards that needs to be activated first. Ok, let's do this. My variable power supply will be the charger. The voltage will be set to 15.60 something volts because it needs to slightly exceed the maximum voltage of the 4S battery pack. And I will set the charging current to 300 mA using a simple ceramic resistor. It should be enough for this test. To activate the BMS just connect the charger for a second. And at this moment the battery pack is charged to 13.7 volts. To monitor the lithium cells I will use this battery monitor. It's a 4S battery pack, so I will use the 5 pin connector. Now we can see the voltage of each cell and the total voltage of the battery pack. I want to test the over discharge protection first, so I will connect a simple load made with two light bulbs. Lithium ion cells should not be discharged below 2.7 volts because they will get damaged. But these are some old and abused cells. I will sacrifice them for views. I mean for science. And after a few minutes, one unlucky cell gets to 2.0 volts and the battery is disconnected from the circuit. It works, although this over discharge voltage is useless for any type of lithium cell. It's time to charge the battery pack. You can see that the cells are unbalanced and the voltage is rising fast. The number 4 cell is almost at 3.9 volts, so the charging process is stopped. But we see two problems in the last scene. The voltage of all the cells is not stable. It dropped immediately after the charging process was stopped. This is because the cells are already damaged and cannot hold their voltage but also because of the second problem, which is the charging current. 
In the last part of the constant current constant voltage charging method, the current should decrease slowly and the voltage should remain constant. That's why it's called constant voltage. But you can see that the 300 mA current goes straight to zero. This is because the cells are unbalanced, not all the cells are charged to 3.9 volts. So there is a big difference between the battery pack voltage and the charging voltage. In this case the difference is 0.45 volts. So the battery pack draws a lot of current until the charging is stopped because only one of the cells gets to 3.9 volts. But if you use new, balanced, good quality cells, the charging will be much better. But what if we add an active balancer to the battery pack? Will this help? Today I will test this type of balancer. It doesn't come with a connector, so I soldered one. Immediately after I connected it to the battery pack, it started transferring energy from the first cell to the second cell. The first LED is lit. The charging should be a lot smoother now, right? Well, it's a little better. This damaged battery pack can be charged to 15.46 volts now, compared to 15.23 volts without the balancer. But the current still drops to zero when the charging is stopped. Next, the overcharge release voltage feature. In time, the cells will self-discharge slowly. When all of them will get below 3.8 volts, the charging process is started automatically. With new cells, this will happen very rarely, probably once a month. I keep saying that this BMS is good if you use it with good quality cells. Well, let's see how good it is. I made this 4S2P battery pack. These lithium-ion cells are almost new, I used them maybe 4 or 5 times. You can see that they are balanced and I don't even need to connect the active balancer. After a lot of time, the cells got to 3.8 volts. They are balanced within a voltage difference of only 0.01 volts, without a balancer. This is amazing! And after a lot more time, the cells are almost at 3.9 volts. The difference between the battery pack voltage and the charging voltage is getting smaller, so the charging current is decreasing now. The current continues to decrease. It got below 100 mA, which is better than TP4056 charging modules. And finally, when the current gets below 70 mA, the charging is completed and the cells have a stable voltage. This BMS board in combination with good lithium-ion cells is ideal for a mini UPS. It keeps the cells voltage between 3.8 and 3.9 volts with a very low number of charging cycles. The cells like this and they will last a lot longer inside the UPS. I really want to use this BMS in future projects. I hope it will be available again soon. If not, sorry for wasting your time. Thank you for watching, please leave a comment, like and share this video. Bye!